Hey, what's up? We should be live. Let me just make sure everything works OK. Uh, I'm doing a bit of a different setup. I'm going to head over to YouTube. OK, good. Looks like it actually works. Uh, so today I'm streaming with StreamYard, uh, which is a bit of a different setup, as I told you about before. And if I want to show you my face, I'll just go not like this, but rather like, how will I do this? How shall I switch it over? Uh, maybe like, OK, yeah, uh, we're, we're messing up right out the gate. So let me, let me see if I can get it. Yeah, here we go. Here's my face. Thank you so much for everyone who is here. I can now do a lot of cool things with this, uh, like actually showing you your uh, chat messages. So Manesh says, Yahoo, Liron, good evening. Thank you so much for being here, Manesh. Uh, we have She Spins Woot Woot uh, on board. Uh, we have Christine Bourgeois says, hi, Liron. We have By Alexander says, hey, Liron. We have Wild Artist says, yay. So thank you so much for anyone who is here. Uh, I'm using a different dashboard now, using StreamYard. You can see this cool little title up top. Uh, it's fun. It shows me how many viewers there are. It's actually a much nicer view than YouTube. Now, the reason I'm using StreamYard is so that I can actually practice doing some more advanced features, uh, which you will see in just a few seconds, and also so that I can interview people more easily. So let's get to some more chat messages, and then we'll jump into today's topic, which is going to be, um, I'm going to show you, here we go, um, how to draw uh, faces, heads, mainly not faces, but heads, um, and how to use boxes to do that. I'll just preface, it's not an easy uh, topic. And by the way, let me know you can hear me OK. Uh, I'm going to test out the audio uh, one second. Yeah, OK, so I think the sound is OK. It should come from the computer's mic, not the camera's mic. That has a bit of a weird echo. But these are all things I will improve with time. So let me see uh, what you're saying here uh, in the chat. We have Mart Martin says, hello. Uh, we have John. Hi, Liron. I hope you're well, my friend. Thank you so, so much for being here, John. As always, much, much appreciated. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, positive username, but a very positive message. Peggy Rossler sends a smile. Christian from Germany uh, says hi again. Uh, David, my friend, uh, how are you doing? It is 9 a.m. here in South Florida. Uh, Michael M. Hi from Northern California. <laughs> Wild Artist says, I need this. OK, good. I'm happy to be here. Dragonfly Art, hello. How are you? Uh, I want to ask, oh, just a second. Let me, let me finish. My says loud and clear. Thank you so much. Uh, MB says, hi, Leron. Hope you're fine. How is your 100 car challenge going? It's going really nicely. I'm actually around 60-something. I think I'm nearing 70 cars. So 60-something percent done. Yay. We'll get it. We'll get it. It's, it's it really it takes a lot of patience. I know it will take time, but I'll get through it. Uh, Aditya says, Namaste from India. Lily Bay One, do you have a drawing course videos for the beginner? Yes, I do have a beginner's drawing course. I think you should find it in the description box uh, if you look for it. Uh, Vespa for Jen says, Hi, everyone. 6 a.m. here in Granite Bay, California. Cool. We have Angela Biker. Good morning from Alberta, Canada. I like, again, I like your, uh, your last name, Biker. That's cool with a Y. Uh, thank you, David, for letting me know the audio is fine. Oops, the chat jumps. It jumps sometimes. Uh, Dragonfly Art, I'm good. Hope you're doing good, too. 6.30 IST. So what is IST? Let me know. Um, let me know if it's if there's light outside or not. Uh, James L. Baker, hi, Leron. Nice to be here today. As always, something new to learn. Hopefully, it will be uh, a good lesson. Uh, Claudia Grimm says, good morning from Pennsylvania. Alexander, you look so good today. Thank you. I, I, I'm not a complete mess because I didn't just step out of the shower. I stepped out of the shower about an hour ago or an hour and a half. Domo says, yo, yo. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Domo. Marjorie Johnson says, good morning. Barb White, hi, Ron. Happy to be here from Ohio. Uh, Michael says, hi, uh, hi, Granite Bay. Loomis here. We're going to do some Loomis today. Uh, Gwen Hudson says, hi, you all from Texas. Um, Aria Kulkarni says, hi. Crispy, again, says, years ago, you painted some pastries from Israel. Could you please tell the name? Um, yeah, what was it? Um, I actually don't remember. Well, there were a few, actually. So one of them was called a Rosalach. Uh, it's really tasty. It's, it's basically just dough with chocolate. Usually, it'll be like um, Nutella chocolate, something like a hazelnut. Really tasty. So it's going to be uh, Rosalach, R O Z. A L A H A C H. Hope oh, it makes sense. Oh, okay, I see Indian Indian Standard Time. Cool, cool. 
Uh, thank you for letting me know. Thank you, Dragonfly. Uh, I forgot to, uh, to even say, oh, yeah, the, the time zone, I guess. Uh, hello, not hello, or I hope, from Northern Virginia, says Paul. Uh, one be gone. Good morning and nice uh, love head practice. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Uh, Rose Hudson says, hi, bestie. Thank you so much, Rose. Hope you're doing well. Aditya, when we in India get uh, late, I see also becomes India's stretchable time. <laughs> yeah, that sounds very, sounds a little Japanese even, Japanese culture. Stretch the workday. Dragonfly Art says, oh, sounds yum. Yes, it is. Paul says, hi from Northern Virginia. Thank you for the Rosal. <laughs> uh, Lola says, so your review on Anne Abgat. I'm studying that match and a lot of fun. Thanks for, yeah, that she's insanely good. It's amazing. Uh, so yeah, I think we can now get to, uh, I'm going to start a drawing. OK, we'll do this in a fun way. So let me switch this view over. Now, I actually. <sighs> I don't have a good, efficient way to add pictures here. Oops, did it do an auto zoom? I did not allow that. Let me let me change the settings on my uh, camera. I I asked it specifically to not do an auto zoom. So let's see how that works. Um, the video may get stuck for a few moments, so you will forgive me. Not auto zoom, sorry, auto focus. You prepare these things in advance, and then they come back and chase you, and still don't work. So get rid of this. And then, so this is totally out of focus, and this should be good. Save. There we go. OK, yeah. Now it's a little better. And let's go back to full screen. Here we go. OK, so uh, there is not really a good way to bring over all of these reference photos. So I just went old school and printed them. Um, basically, using 3D models uh, to, uh, to rotate in any angle I want the human head. Uh, and I have links to them in the description box. So we have one that's a little softer, um, softer facial features, and then one that's a little rougher. Okay, so you get two different ones that I use a lot and I like a lot. I also use these sometimes for reference if I'm not sure if I'm actually drawing a character. And I want to figure out how it would look at a specific angle because a lot of interesting things happen. For so, for example, just to give you a quick one, look at the nose from front view, right? The nose in the middle of the face. But as you go like that for a lower view, the tip of the nose lifts, raises up. So if you look at the tip of the nose here, it's under the eyes. But look what happens when we tilt the head backwards or up. You see how the tip of the nose gets closer to the eyes? There's a lot that goes on that's very mysterious. And if you're not used to seeing it, it's very hard. Now I'm going to go back to my preface from earlier. This is not an easy topic. This is very complex. I'm going to try and start from uh, the, the beginning. Um, but I definitely can't make any promises. It is a challenge, OK? So we'll try to first tackle 3D. And I'll try tackling it in a way that uh, I didn't see many times before people tackle it, OK? So let's get to it. I'm going to switch over to uh, this blank piece of paper here. It's my sketchbook. It's my anatomy sketchbook. I have a lot of studies here, mostly figures. You'll recognize some of Proko poses, uh, but also practicing uh, drawing heads. Let me find some. Uh, it's just my sketchbook. That's where I do all my practices, mannequinization, motion, gesture, blah, 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 blah. And it's from, you'll, you'll, you'll get a kick out of it. I think I started this one about a week ago. So everything you saw was done in a week. So let me show you something interesting, OK? The paper is a flat surface, right? Now, in order to convey a three-dimensional surface, we need a method. We need to understand three-dimensionality in such a way that we can convey it on a 2D surface. Okay, now let's look at something interesting. So imagine for a second that when you're looking at a three-dimensional space right here in front of the camera, you have only a few ways to go. You have left and right, okay? You have top and bottom, and you have depth inside and outside. So let's draw this for a second. And then I will stop after this and make sure that you understand, okay? So let's do this. Uh, well, with colors, I brought a couple of crayons because I think it will be clearer. So we have this axis, the right, left, let's say. And then we have this axis, top, bottom, right? And then we have this axis, pay close attention, inside and outside. It's going into the page, okay, into the page because we have depth, we have insight, right? And you can take this system of axes and rotate it in any way. 
So let us rotate it a bit of a different way. And I have not seen a lot of people cover this. So imagine for a second that we're going to rotate it like this. What will we get? We have the right left axis. And stick with me. It's not going to be the easiest necessarily to understand, but you will get it. Okay. And then we have the top bottom, right left, top bottom, and we have the inside and outside, in, out, in, out. So what we did was rotate the system to show every possible direction into space. You can go this direction, you can go this direction, or you can go this direction. Now, any point in this three-dimensional space, you can access by these simple steps. So how would you do that? Let's say you want to get to here, right? Just a random spot. OK, you want to be here. You travel along this axis all the way to here. Then you travel along this axis all the way to here. Just an example, OK? Let's say you want to reach a point that's somewhere kind of in the middle in the air. So you, let's say, you want to get to this one. So you take a trip to uh, the left. Then you take a trip up, and then you go outwards into space. Okay, just an example. This system allows us to get anywhere. Now, let me ask you a question. Does this system remind you of something? We have three sets of lines. Does this remind you of something you may be familiar with? Okay, trick question. Let me show you. And let's see if we're running okay, because I see the, I don't know, it's a bit weird on my end. Yeah, okay, that's good. So, what does this system remind you of? A cube, because a cube has all of these planes. It has a top, bottom, right, left, and depth. So let's use the same lines, parallel. That's one line for the red. I can use the same one. Let's do this. It will be easier. Red, OK? Green, right? Parallel, kind of parallel. Blue. Right? And then what do we have here? We have a line that's also parallel, so red, right? And then we have a green. And then we have another red. And then we have another green. And then we have two more blues. So this cube is just another representation of this three axis. Now, this you can rotate in any angle. Let me show you another one, OK? Let's say we're getting closer to this surface. So what will happen? Or maybe let's, let's tilt it even more. So we'll get one that goes like this, one that goes like that, and another one that goes inwards into the depth of paper, right? So we actually look at it more from above. And every point in space can be described by this. I hope that makes sense. Let me go over some of your comments, and we'll see that I didn't lose you. Too badly, OK? Uh, so we have, and I'm going to read some just fun chats. I see that the chat doesn't update on my uh, stream yard, or am I imagining things? Let's see. Yeah, it's definitely not updating. How shall I get it to update? OK, we'll see. I'll just read through them, and we'll see what happens. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Maybe it did update. I don't know. Let me check. Let me check. It's a good spot to, to take a break anyway. Um, uh, hello from Eastern Virginia, says she spins. Shyam says, Liron, thank you for doing this live session. It's very important to use boxes to get three-dimensional view of head. Exactly, yes, that is true. Don't worry, if you rotated it purely horizontal, wouldn't the red become like green in the first one and the green would look uh, horizontal? So yes, that is true. If you rotate it only, yes, that is great. Domo. Great observation. So let's say you take this. And you rotate it all the way, so you're looking at it like that, right? What you have, in fact, here is this. Yeah, that's that's another good way of showing it. Let me just do it this way, right? So you have a three-axis system, and you can rotate it in any direction. Okay, and I want you to understand this concept, even if you think it'll be incredibly hard to actually portray it on paper. Okay, I want you to understand. So what you said is that if we rotate it like this, exactly, the red turns like the green. And the green will look horizontal. Great. And if you rotate it like up and down, the blue will become that. 
and you can also you can rotate it in any direction you want in space. Okay, and that's the basis for everything. If you understand, you can reach anywhere on these three axes. You'll do really well. Okay, and heads rely on spheres, which is much harder than cubes. This is why we're starting with a cube. Okay. So we're going to jump into the next step. I just want to make sure that I'm not missing too many comments. So we had, uh, OK, we're good. We're good. We I have everything here. Great. Uh, Kelvin Zero says, uh, graphic design guide. I saw that uh, often in 3D Engine, like a CAD designer or blender. Yeah, I'm sure they show it everywhere. I already understand this, but it's still interesting to hear you explain. Thank you, Domo. Uh, she spins, uh, get a large jacket, you can have a physical representation of that. Yeah, I think I could. There's There are plenty of ways, actually, to represent that. It's funny. Uh, and by Alexander says, uh, I'm growing with you now. Super cool. OK, so let's take it to the next step. Once we've established this system of axes, axes. Um, so we'll have one more uh, like this, and then another one like that. I should get a colored pencil that has um, two different colors on every side, so, and this, okay? And then we understand that if we want to draw a cube based on that, we'll use any of these three axes. Now, let's, for a second, imagine, I'll show you this with the Rubik's cube, because it is a good refresher, okay? So let's say we have this cube here, Rubik's cube. If you look at it head on, what do you see? You just see a square, okay? So what you'll see is something like that. Square, okay? Really bad square, but a square at that. Now, if you rotate it sideways, imagine you're rotating it on one of these axes. So you go like this, you start seeing that other side of the cube, right? And if you rotate it up or down or tilt it, you'll see the third one. Every different angle will show you something else. And this is what I always say. I want you to be able to draw a cube from any angle from imagination. It's really important. Once you understand the concepts, it gets much, much easier. So let's have an experiment, OK? If you look at it straight ahead, and we'll trap it inside this system of different axes, this is the red, this is the blue, and this is the green, OK? Now, what happens if we tilt that cube around? So what we'll have, and I'll show you how it kind of is interpreted in the different axes, You'll have something like, and don't worry, you'll see it better in just a second, something like that, a three-dimensional cube, where this is the red axis, this is the blue axis, and this is the green axis. Okay? I hope that makes sense. Top, bottom, inside, out and left to right. But don't forget, this can be interchangeable. You can move this in any direction, right? You can decide that this is top to bottom. You can decide that that's top to bottom. Now, I want to show you something cool, OK? I want to show you why this is so important. So I started diving deeper into perspective recently, and I learned a lot of interesting things. So let's say we have a. I want to go back to this example for a moment. OK. One more thing I want to explain. These lines are parallel to the red axis, right? This line and this line. Correct? Now, when I draw them on paper, I don't draw them perfectly parallel. Why is that? OK? Trick quiz. Why am I not drawing them parallel? And, and of course, I talked about this a lot in the past, so a lot of you may know. Why am I not drawing these perfectly parallel? And you may think I am, but let me show you. If I continue these, they actually converge. If I'll continue these, I'll converge. In fact, let me show you a more extreme example. Why are these lines parallel in reality, but not parallel on paper? Look at that. Huh. They're not drawn parallel on paper. The reason for that is that to indicate lines that are parallel in space and they move away from you, they're going to converge. Why? Because things that are farther appear smaller. So this length right here 
AB is actually longer than CD, okay? This is longer than that because that's farther out. That's farther away in the distance. And if we go even farther than that, you'll get an, you know, it's supposed to be like this, more like, because it's really skewed here. This is even shorter, okay? So this shorter by a small difference, but look at this one, it's much shorter, okay? Because these lines are parallel, but they move away from us. And things that are farther away are smaller. People that are closer are larger, appear to be larger than people that are farther, right? Just an example. So we cannot draw these lines perfectly parallel. We converge them a bit. And that's what I want you to practice. I'm not going to dive too deep into that because it's super long. But basically, let's draw a normal cube without all of that, OK? Like a cube that has no perspective. So this line, let's draw three lines first to show that we see each of the three sides. And I will draw this line perfectly perpendicular to this line. And then this line perfectly perpendicular, this line perfectly perpendicular, this line perfectly perpendicular. I have to, to struggle and force myself to do it this, one, right? So this cube feels a little less dynamic. These are small, those are far away. Yes, exactly, Calvin, that is correct. As long as the, the, the farther something is or uh, is from us, the less perspective is going to be felt, OK? So what is up? with this kind of a cube, this insanity. What is that? Does it remind you of anything? If I draw a cube like that, it's super skewed. It still follows the same principles. These converge, these converge, right? What is up with this cube? We're very close to it so that it skews our view. It makes it so this is so much closer to us than this that we get a huge skewing. It goes really from huge to small. I want you to understand this on the on, on, a, on the logical level, okay? I know that you may not be able to draw this yet, okay? I want you to understand the concept behind it. This line here and this line there, they're of equal length in reality. Look at them, they're equal length. But what happens when we get so close to this corner, this corner in comparison looks so farther away. And Kelvin, that looks like a fisheye lens because you're correct. That's what a fisheye lens does. It converges everything together closer. So look at what we have here. If we connect these two dots, we'll end up somewhere around here. If we connect, sorry, these lines. And if we connect these lines, we'll end up somewhere around here. Connect these two lines. And what did we get? The horizon line. OK? And let's say. These lines that converge away from us, let's connect them down there at infinity. They're going to converge maybe somewhere around here, perhaps. Right? That's the third perspective. That's the third uh, point. Third point of perspective. One, two, three. We're going to talk about that later. It's not as important for now. Okay? But I want you to have in mind this, because this is something that a lot of people struggle with and I struggled with too. What is the difference between these two scenes. In one of them, we have this cube, or this box, rather. And in the other, we have this box. Sorry, like that. I don't like that. What's the difference between these two scenes? Why are these vanishing points closer together? Because remember, vanishing points do not exist in reality. So what are they? They represent our distance from the subject. So if you're looking at this cube from afar, the difference between this length and this length isn't as extreme as if you would be looking at it from up close. Here, we're really close to this cube. And that's what pushes the vanishing points together. They're not pushed in reality together because they, there isn't such a thing as a vanishing point. It's just how we see things 
the mathematical way of representing it is those vanishing points and what happens what's the math behind this they go closer together so when you're wondering where should i place the vanishing points the question is how close are you to the reference photo for, to the object most of the time you won't be as close so you'll go with something that means if this is a, a and, and and just a good kind of basic rule of thumb if you have this um this scene horizontally you'll put the vanishing points a little outside and that will lead to a relatively natural view okay now if you start putting it inside the scene that's where it becomes a little bit skewed okay so that's kind of a basic rule of thumb just from what i have observed okay i don't i to be honest with you i'm not able to measure exactly how the placement influences the distance. I don't know to tell you when it's this far away, we're three meters from the cube or whatever. I don't care about that. I want you to understand it on a logical level, okay? Let's go over some of the comments and make sure that we're we're in this together because it is it is a tough subject, okay? So we have 50, 45 very persistent people who want to understand this. Uh, so let's go over them real fast. Uh, da, 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 every set of parallel uh, tapers in real life, aka three-point perspective. That is correct. If you have any questions, just ask me. <laughs> you're on your way to becoming a gi. Is that a Kim Jong gi? Uh, I have a long way to go, <laughs> if ever. That looks like fish eye lens. That is correct. David says it reaches the vanishing point. Perspective. The second one um, is the look from above. Yeah, okay. So this one, it feels like it's more from above. Yes, that is true. That would be more about where I place the cube inside the scene. So you are correct. If I want this to be less from above, I can actually do this. I can do a similar thing, but put it a little higher. And then it will look like it's a little less from above, but still super skewed, right? That makes sense? Um, because I changed its place in relation to the horizon line as well. Uh, wouldn't the second one be a little for a higher position? Also, okay, yes, we address that. Let me know if this is clear. Uh, again, within a given scene, with any set of vanishing points, you can still have different placements for a box, right? So you can have the box here, or you can have the box right there in the distance, right? So we can have a box here, and we can have a box here. Those are two different boxes, same scene, right? So the reason this looked more from above and you were correct is because I lowered it too. In addition to putting the vanishing points closer together, I also lowered it. That was that, That's on me, so sorry about that. Uh, Angela Biker says, for shortening, I have to start work, but we'll watch the replay. Yes, there's a lot of foreshortening happening here. Yes, that is the concept that is more familiar to people who paint. Um, Lynn, actually, I know how to draw boxes now, but I don't know how to put the nose, eyes, and mouth into it. Okay, we'll talk about that. Uh, yes. He's a he's a genius. That's that was, I don't that's like a dream that I don't think will ever happen. This guy's looking at things from a super young age and analyzing them in his mind is it's incredible. Um, so fresh page, fresh start. Now, why are we looking at cubes? Because I want to demonstrate to you today how cubes help us draw the human face or the head. Now, there is an added element here, and that is spheres. Spheres are harder than cubes. So what I would do is homework number one. Homework one. This live stream is very introductory. We're not going to dive deeper into that. Homework one should be the number should be here. <laughs> not here. Hashtag homework. You have to practice cubes. OK. Cubes. Now, for those of you who have good control over cubes, like Lynn, hopefully, if you can draw the cube in any angle. So for example, you can go like this and freehand it pretty much and get that cube in. And then maybe let's say you rotate it a bit to the left. So you know that this will become longer. And at a, at a different angle, this will also change the angle and get shorter, right? This goes here. This goes there. This goes like this. And we've essentially rotated it, right? We rotated it this way. And we got this. Now, if you want to rotate it more, let's do this. So it'll be something like that, right? Something like that, right? So, and then if we want to tilt it, let's say we want to tilt it towards us. So this line will get longer because we see more of it. This line will stay kind of similar, I think. Then we'll get this. 
and then we'll eventually get something like that, right? So we tilted it down. If you tell me that you can do this from imagination, any angle, you're good to go on the next step, okay? This isn't easy. This is something I still do every every time I practice uh, gestures or, or uh, drawing the figure. Every time I still do this, every time I do it, okay? So every time I practice. So don't, don't take it lightly. This is homework number one, okay? Now on to spheres. Spheres are not easy. Spheres are rounded objects in space. And let me bring back my two colors here. So this is, what is that? Trick question. What is this thing here? Let me know. <laughs> I'll wait for a few comments to come and we'll see. I don't know if the StreamYards gets the new comments. Yeah, it does, it does. Okay, I'm, I'm just, I'm just uh, paranoid. Uh, and thank you so much to anyone who's here. If I can ask you for a favor, let me show you a neat little trick. Let me show you my face here. I'm going to show you a neat little trick. If you can please drop a like, it helps the stream reach more people. Uh, so if you haven't liked it yet, please do, because it helps uh, the stream reach more people. I'm going to leave this down below for a while, OK? So let me know. It's a circle. That is correct, Kelvin. And Frozen, thank you so much for answering. That is a circle. It is not a sphere. Let me show you a sphere. This is two-dimensional. We don't know anything about it, OK? Once we start putting in some of that system of axes we looked at earlier, then it becomes a sphere. So what would happen? There's actually a really good video on YouTube by Marshall Vandruff. Very short, 10 minutes, explains it perfectly. And good morning, Marina. I hope you're doing well. Um, once you start tilting it and moving it in space and showing that tilt, it becomes a sphere. So if we tilt it or look at it from above, like so, it will become a sphere. So let's say, imagine we took a rubber band and we wrap it around. So let's say I have this. I really need to just get a ball to demonstrate this. I'll get a ball, one second. One second, I'll need it. Air. So hopefully I didn't lose you all. <laughs> Here we go. We got Ruth's disgusting tennis ball. I'm going to get another band, sorry. <laughs> If you're still here, let me know. Jerome, we're here. We didn't bail on you. Let me know in the chat. So we have this disgusting tennis ball by Ruth, and I'm going to wrap around it two rubber bands, OK? So if we look at it straight on, let me fix this. This is terrible. This is really bad. Good. Half decent. So if we look at it straight on like that, right? What do we get? We get this. Look at how dirty it is. And then we get one and two. Is that correct? Hopefully you're getting it. Thank you so much, Vespa, for Jen, for still being here. Now, let's tilt it. Notice what happens to that band. It wraps around, OK? This stays the same because we tilted it only along one axis. If we tilt it right to left, left to right, this rubber band changes. And if we do both, they both move, OK? So it's something to be aware of. So let's see what happens. So we have this ball. Right now it is a ball. And it's wrapped around with rubber bands, right? These are green rubber bands. What happens if we take this very same ball and rotate it to the left? Look at what we'll get to the left, OK? This will stay the same. So we're going to do, and I'm going to explain why I do this center line in just a second. I'll explain it. So we get this, stays the same. But now we're tilting it to the left, so we'll get something like this, right? And the front is here. 
So now we've tilted the ball to the left. And it's actually, I want to show you some. Okay, let's let's talk a bit about this center line. Yeah, this is a good revision. I'm, I'm happy to hear. Really did work on spheres. Yeah. Okay, we'll dive deeper on those because they're really important. So let's say you have this sphere, and I promise we'll try and get uh, to work on some heads too. Okay. Now, this is the center point of the sphere. You have to learn how to find it kind of intuitively. You will with time. Here's what happens when we look at it directly, right? We have just two lines that create a cross, essentially. Why am I always drawing them? Because here's what happens. I'll, I'll show it here. Do you see where the green line cuts through this line of the cross? These are equal distances. This is equal to that. Whenever you wrap a rubber band around a ball, you'll get the same, you get a, a, an ellipse, right? And that ellipse has to have an equal distance from here to there. Now, technically, this is farther from us. That's the backside. That's the hidden part. It goes behind the ball. It goes behind it, right? Technically, this should be a little longer because it's closer to us, but let's not get into that for now, okay? Now, what would happen if we tilt this ball more downwards? This rubber band will follow and it re will reach not till here like it does here, but lower and the same distance here like that does that make sense and then the front part which is still this one let's let's say let's assume right and this goes behind we can erase it a bit to make it clear okay i should draw these a little weaker we're going to switch i think to pencil in a moment but i'm just i really want to show you this concept okay so far so good so let me show you something cool so we've seen that this rubber band wraps all around this sphere, right? This ball, whatever it is. Same goes on the other side. There are two places where the rubber bands intersect. Where are they? One and two. Now, what would happen if we were to connect these two dots? What we essentially get here is a line that goes through the center of that ball, right? This line can be a line that's on this system of axes, right? So let's say this is the red line here. What would be the line that goes 90 degrees to that? It's going to be on that same sphere, because on that same ellipse, because it's flat. So it's going to be maybe here, maybe there. It's not easy to always get it, but think about it this way. It should divide that sphere into equal kind of quarters, if you will. So let me just drop something here and see if it makes sense. Or it, will it be this one? No, no, it's not going to be this one. It's going to be somewhere around here, right? So that will be the green axis. And then this will be the blue axis. So we've essentially applied these this system of axes to a ball, okay? Well, let's try and do that again. Let's see what we can do here. I want to show you some interesting things, actually. Uh, Marjorie says, great exercises. If we were uh, uh, still substitute teaching, I would surely not be keeping these exercises to myself. Yeah, it makes a ton of sense. Thank you, Donald. So let's do another one. Let's go a little weaker this time. My circles are not as good today, so that's fine. Now, so far, we've looked at the rubber band, right? It goes somewhere around this, and we looked at this as the front. Now, what would happen if this was the front? And this was the back. We're looking at this ball from where? From above or below? Let me know. I'll answer in just a second. We're looking at this ball from below because this rubber band that used to be horizontal now rotates around. Time to get out my glass balls. Yes, whatever you have, it will help. Um, I've been drawing for almost three years now and I still can't draw a circle. <laughs> you need to do this all day long. That's, that's how I do it, all day long and practice both like this 
and from above and all different angles. Yeah, so we're looking at this one from above, right? Now I wanna show you something interesting. Let's say, once again, that we're gonna also tilt it a bit to the right. Remember, this ellipse causes equal distances here and here, right? But the front, let's say, is here. So it's tilted a bit like that, right? And, if, and you see there are two connection points between the two ovals, one and two. Let's connect them once again. And we get, once again, one of the axes of that system, right? And it's going towards us, okay? You want to familiarize yourself with the, with the, the ball so well that you can tell where the bottom is. So for example, because this is tilted upwards, the bottom is not the, like the southern pole is not going to be here, but rather it's going to be somewhere up on this line. So somewhere around here, perhaps, right? And then the other side is there. You want to become so familiarized with it that you can see all of these things instantly. So if you have a ball and you wrap it up with a band and another band, right? And we're looking at it from above. So the center, the top is here. And this is what Marshall does all the time. It's a, such a great exercise. And then we have this one goes to the other side, right? We can see the other side and then we have this one. So what did we get here essentially? The system of axes, right? Now I'm not an expert in spheres and ellipses, but I would encourage you to just well, like I'm doing, practice doing this intuitively. Intuitively I can do it decently, okay? Same system of axes, top, bottom, left, right, uh, inside, outside. Same concept. You want to gain a really good control of this. So now, let me know if you have any questions so far, but I think we're ready to tackle some faces. You're not ready. I'm ready to show you. Trust me, you won't be able to get this right the first time because I will show you a few advanced things, okay? And one more thing to have in mind is what, what we're gonna do is cut our ball into pieces when we're drawing the face. Because what happens is the human face is made of a sphere that sides have been cut. So we essentially change its shape. It's not just a ball. It's a sphere where we cut the sides. And that's not an easy concept to grasp. So you have to start developing control for that, okay? So I think people are, uh, Kelvin, I think, Kelvin, Barb, Barb says must go, but we'll watch later, thank you. Um, so we have basically Marjorie, Domo, and Kelvin. I, I hope the rest of the people don't fall asleep. I'm really sorry if this is boring. We'll get to faces and heads soon, okay? So I wanna show you how to cut that ball in different places. So let's say you have a ball here. And let's say this goes through the center. How should I explain it? Okay. Let's say we have this ball. And I want to cut it here, right? Let's say I want to remove this side of it, okay? I'm cutting, well, let's, let me think for a second. I want to make sure I get it right. I'm cutting along this axis at the moment, okay? I, I wonder if I should go into that. That's way too complex. Okay, the axis that I want to cut on, so let's say I have this axis and the, this is the oval, right? The axis I want to cut on, I have to go 90 degrees to, and I showed you this before. Let's say you have a car and it's tires. You go this line, 90 degree to that, and that's going to be the angle of the tires, you see this angle. And if we rotate it, it'll go like this, right? You'll see a bit less of the other side, this line parallel, and that's gonna be the long axis of the tire. Okay, I've shown you this before. Do you get that? That Let me know if this is kind of clear. I'll, I'll do another iteration, but let me know. No name, I'm anonymous, I won't sleep, don't worry. Thank you, okay. I just wanna make sure that you, that you understand some of it. MB, I'm too concentrated to join the chat. Yeah, okay, okay. Good. that's that's good. I, I don't mind that. 
uh yeah a little sleepy lin cutting into shapes i can do attaching them together less so yeah okay so so you're advanced though uh banani says no i don't i don't sleep i'm drawing with you okay perfect perfect yes yeah. draw with me whatever it is yes i'll be happy if you do that i just wanted to make sure that you understand some of it so let's say we have this sphere here okay and there are three axes let's say i want to cut on this axis that's the angle of my ellipse that i will cut into the square let me demonstrate so i'm gonna cut this kind of a side section and that's it and that is excessive that is no longer a part of that oval does that make sense vespa for jen says Woof, complicated but i'm still drawing with you cool, cool so now let's do the same thing oval same system of axes and let's now cut with this one so this is the angle of our ellipse and let's cut the top let's cut not so close down to the bottom or middle look at that we got rid of this part this dome part of our circle right and i can rotate it the center will be somewhere around here right and you can see how bad my circles are when I rotate them. Okay, but one thing I want to you to really to pay attention to before we move forward. Okay. The thing with these lines is it's a very common mistake to draw them like that. But this is inaccurate. This ellipse is not good. Okay, this kind of an ellipse is not good because what happens in reality is this rubber band wraps around the ball and the angle becomes steeper the more it gets to the side that's how you create an ellipse let me show you on the bottom here you have an ellipse so this goes steeper around the edges the curve becomes curvier and that's really important same here it curves 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 and then it almost kisses that side here almost at the same angle and the closer it is to the side the more steep it's going to be so if you look at it like this you have a line if you look at it like that you'll get a curve that is is very curvy and then just at the tippy top will go like that but if you rotate it more you'll get a curve that's a little more like this and if you rotate it all the way till the end look at what happens it almost becomes a circle in and of itself that's the thing you want to pay attention to don't make the mistake like I saw when I was a kid but even when I was in, in second or third grade I understood this I'd see people draw these coca-cola cans and they wouldn't do this they'll go like that that's the bottom of the can now please tell me something looks wrong here because it shouldn't go like this what kind of a shape is that it goes like that let me let me show you a bit of a more available space this ellipse needs to return here so what will happen it needs to happen again here this is it goes really rounded really rounded and then it flattens near the bottom it doesn't do this if you want to look at a cross section of this if you want to imagine you wrap rubber bands around this you wouldn't do this you'll do this okay so just pay attention this and not that it's really important no name anonymous says it's scaring me uh, that how good my circles are now that i practice like 100 pieces of just circles yes that's just how it helps that one says i found it extremely helpful to think of the cut uh, side is flat no longer rounded like the rest of the sphere exactly that is so important because it is flat so now let's go back to this example and you'll notice again the same concept look at how curvy it goes here it's very curvy okay it doesn't do this weird thing it curves around this is very important okay so now let's cut it along the only axis we haven't tried yet which is um this one right yeah so this is the long axis for that and we can cut it right down the middle we can go even more extreme so we basically got rid of half a circle there let me clean it up a bit i'll go much weaker if it's just for myself but i want you to see so we basically this is flat cut it 
That's something you need to know how to do to draw the head. Let me show you why. As I've explained earlier, the head, look at a very simple angle right from the front, okay? So the head is essentially a ball. Now let's do these lines to help me find my way in space, right? And then, so this is one rubber band, correct? But what happens with the human head is you cut off the sides. So when you cut off the sides, depending on the angle from which you're looking at it, do you see this section here? This is the side. This is actually the cut part. If you would continue a circle, it will go like that. You'll be able to see it in the light. You see my lines? We cut the left side to create that side plane of the face. So a good question is, where do we cut? We're going to look at that. Or do we cut here? Do we cut here? Do we cut here? How much do we cut? We'll look at that, OK? Uh, Frozen says, so the closer to center, the less sharp of an ellipse. Closer to center, the less sharp the ellipse. Yes, that is true. That is correct, yes. When you look at it like this, this is going to be just a line. This is going to be a bit of a uh, sharper. And then the closer to center, the less sharp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess you mean this is sharper, right? This is sharper than this, for example. Yes, that is correct. And, and this is just, it's Marshall's video, it's pumpkins. If you do this enough times, you'll just get either a beach, beach ball or pumpkins, right? And then these are rounded shapes, kind of like this. Oh, that makes sense. And it goes all around. I guess that's a side tangent. But let's imagine we cut this side out. Now, here's the thing. It's not only cut straight up, it also is like this. So you can actually see both sides here, this side and that side. So how will this work? We'll basically decide on a place to cut, like here, and then we'll create an ellipse around that, OK? It's a little simplified what I'm doing right now, but bear with me. Now, how will we cut the exact same shape on the right side? We'll draw these horizontal lines, and we'll get the exact same ellipse here, as much as we can. Now, how do we get the exact same ellipse? Look at this distance. Keep it the same. So maybe something like that, right? Something like that. I'm going to show you a faster way of doing this in just a second. I mean, I'm going to show you myself doing it a little faster. But now we've essentially cut out the sides of that ball, right? So let's get rid of them. And I'm not as uh, as symmetrical as I'd want to be, but that's fine. It's not the end of the world. We cut out both sides. Now we need to attach the jaw, basically all the bottom part. So the way Loomis does it, understand, reality can be interpreted in many different ways. And so there's a variety of methods that can help us draw the human head without any reference. So what Loomis does is he takes that same distance from the center to here, to the bottom of these ellipses, and he just doubles it. So something like that, right? And drops a line that's the center of the face, kind of the center. And then attaching the jaw isn't that hard. So this is the chin. And you can basically take this line. That's where the ear is. The ear starts here, and it goes some, some something like that, OK? That's where the ear is going to be. And you basically create, and you can follow the reference, right? So you basically start at an angle and then close in at a different angle. And that's kind of how you get the, the face in. Now, as for placements, this is the eyebrows based on the Loomis method. And inside, and that's the nose, approximately. And that's the mouth here. And then. If you cut into the eye socket, you'll find the eyes resting along this line, something like that. This corner is higher than that corner. Now, I'm not a master of the facial features, so I'm not going to go into too much depth on them, maybe a little bit later on, but I'm not a master of that. What I want to show you is how to capture the shape of the head, because that's the very first step. If you're having a hard time adding the nose and the mouth, like uh, you said earlier, I believe it was Lynn, or I don't remember who said it, 
you need to first master this because everything else is based on that. Now, let me know just in a, in a quick chat message if so far we're good, and then we'll move forward. I'll demonstrate this multiple times so you get the basic idea, and then you can practice it, okay? And by the way, I forgot to mention, homework number two is spheres. You have to work on that. Okay, so we add boxes or, or uh, yeah, boxes and then spheres. Good. So let me see what you're saying here. Uh, da, 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 da. My experience drawing faces on different angles and not straight on helped me get a better grasp of it for sure. We'll look at a lot of weird angles today. Uh, I just bought Loomis book. Uh, I hope I can watch all of this later. Will it still be available? Yes, it will. Don't worry. Kelvin Zero, I have some trouble on where to put the eyes. Yeah, we'll get there too. I'll show you. Uh, the eyes can be a little tricky because what happens is they're inward. So they essentially go back in space. Okay, I'll show you how to do that. MB, I didn't understand where the line for the mouth comes from. Yeah, so in frontal view, the the way it works is like that. The eyebrows are on this first line we established on the circle. The nose is that bottom part of the ellipses. And then what you do is you double that distance, so you find the chin. The mouth is somewhere in the middle. It's actually quite simple. It's just the middle between the nose and the bottom of the chin. Okay. In front view, it coincides with that circle. But when you change the angle, it won't anymore. So you can't rely on that. Okay. I hope that makes sense, MB. Let me know. Uh, me too. Uh, Banani says me too. So I guess that was the same thing. Let me know. Uh, by the way, did you draw your profile pic? That is so good. I love that. That's really nice. Um, Domo, the part I struggle with now is how the nose connects to everything, especially the cheeks and mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, same thing for me. I'm still learning these things. You know, it's it's not easy. What you want to learn is the major planes of the face because there are a few main planes like the eye sockets, how they dent, they're they dented inwards. The nose has the front and sides. The mouth has, you know, the, the bottom of the lip, the top. That It's... That, it's that kind of a thing you want to practice individually and then put it together. I'm still working on these things, so I won't attempt to fully explain them. I, but sorry about that. Yes, it's, um, it's it's mostly the heads. This is why I said heads for the title. Hopefully, no one's disappointed. Ambi, thank you. That helped. You're a great teacher. Thank you so much. Um, so, yeah. So, let me show you how this plays out in a different angle. Now, I'm thinking which one I should go with. Let's go with... Or let's do um, let's do another one. I want to do this one again just to make sure that you're, you're you got it. Okay, so I'm gonna start with a circle, right? I really need to sharpen my pencil, but well, it'll do for now. And then let me just make sure that it's kind of equal uh, height and, and length. Uh, yeah, the face is hard to draw because all of them are different. Yes, that is true. And then let's get the center line horizontally and vertically. So that is kind of the center of that circle. Now, Loomis goes like that. You divide this top part into three and the bottom part into three. So these are all equal. This one's equal to this one, this equal to this one's equal to this. Basically, you divide it into six parts, okay? Draw a horizontal line from the lower and upper parts. And that's where you draw the ellipses. That's how Loomis does it for an idealized face structure. It's not how it always will be, but that's how the Loomis method kind of works. Okay? Now let's do the ellipses. So for the ellipse, I'm going to go like that. This is terrible. I'm going to sharpen it. Sorry. I have to. I'll show you how I sharpen it, the pencil. It's fun, actually. Let's just go like with a palette knife. If you have any questions that are off topic too, feel free to ask them. I'm just, I just have to. It's so annoying. It's, it's been super blunt for a few days now. I didn't sharpen it for way too long. Usually, I'll sharpen it at the start of every session, but I was like, eh, it's OK. It's good. There no worries. I can still work with it, but now it's way too much. And then after I get rid of some of that wooden part, I'll use sandpaper to get that last section out. So I'll just 
rub it again. The sandpaper, and hopefully that will make my life a little easier. I won't do a full sharpen now, but we'll, we'll do something. Something simple, just so that I can actually use it. It's super annoying. Yeah. So I think this should be better. So now, and my hands are terribly dirty. Let's clean a bit. Okay. Now let's cut these sides. So we cut out one side. And we cut out another side of that uh, square. Now, I cut out wider, like at a wider angle this time. I could have gone a little less wide, but that's fine. It's different face structure. You will see a lot of, uh, a, a big variety. And then it goes like this to the bottom. So we got rid of the sides of the ball. We cut out really a little of it, not too much, right? And this is our previous line from before. This is the bottom of where we cut. This should go a little more rounded. Double this distance right towards here. Center line for the face. Move down from the center here and onto the chin. Same on the other side. Try to keep it as symmetrical as you can. And the ear is going to be somewhere around here. Okay? So that's that. Now, as for the placement of the facial features, eyebrows on that line, nose on that bottom line, and mouth middle between this and that, between the nose and the chin, OK? Eyes will be somewhere around the top of the ear is what I find, but it really will depend on the person, and a little bit inward. So it's not the same line as the eyebrow, but a little to the side, tilted. Something like that, from what I observed. Something like this, OK? Um, now, let's go over some messages. Let's see. The faces, uh, yes, all of them are different, super different. Tom Dancer says, oops, nearly missed it. Hi, busy painting my dad's favorite place for his birthday. Cool, cool. Uh, I can only do this due to lessons, not just technique of people like you, Leron. Thanks. Thank you so, so much. I'm so happy to hear. Uh, if you want to send me the result, just out of curiosity, definitely feel free to. No name, I'm anonymous, kind of curious. What's your favorite non-living thing to draw? That's a good question. Non-living thing to draw. Hmm. I'll have to think about it. I'm not sure, honestly. Sorry, I don't have a, an answer off the top of my head. Non living. I mean, I draw anime characters or manga characters. They're not living, but but it's still people. Um, I like hmm. It's a good question. I like simple things like just three-dimensional shapes. Um, but I don't know, sorry. Uh, but Annie says, yeah, I meant the placement of the eyes. And yes, I draw the profile pic, which is me. It's really, really good. I love that. Um, so, oopsie doops, dropped my red color pencil. So let's do another one at a different angle. And I want to show you at some point how the um, boxes play into that. Okay. So what we have here is a head tilted to the left. So it goes to the left, but it's still, it's not tilted back and like up or down. Okay, so it's a bit of an easier time. So let's do this. Uh, hopefully you can see the ref. I'm trying to figure out where to play. Let's place it here because it interrupts me. It's in the way. So let's do this, right? And then I'll draw that circle and I'll start weak this time. I want, I want to have really good control over this. And then this is the center line, and this is another center line. So the angle of this one is flat. It's just tilted to the left. Now, how much is it tilted to the left? That's a bit of a an eyeball kind of matter. To me, it looks something around this. Remember, same concept for the rubber bands. We're going around at an ellipse. But here's how I like to do it. I like to look for the plane change from the roundedness to the flatness. And if you look at it, where does that happen? Somewhere around the edge of the eyebrow. That's where it will usually happen. You can actually follow the shape. Can you see this flat side of the head? Can you see this? That's what we need to get out of our overall circle. OK, so let's get that. 
So it's something like halfway through, which is around here, right? Now, based on the Loomis method, we'll divide it to three and three, and that's the height in which we'll cut. So it goes like here, but also we need to get all the way to here. So we create an ellipse that has these three points in it. How will we do that? Like that. Very gently build it up, OK? And it's not easy. This is why I say you need to practice boxes. You need to practice uh, circles. You need to practice ellipses. You need to develop that understanding. Don't worry, Frozen. I'll go darker right now, OK? I just wanted you to really, uh, I just wanted to get make sure I get it as accurately as I can. So this is our circle. And we saw that the plane change is usually around the edge of the eyebrow. And that's around midway through this distance, right? Look at this, equal to that, approximately. So the midway point is here. So we need an ellipse that the long axis is this, right? It reaches this point, and it cuts along this height. So first you ghost. You try and get try and get the curve you want in, and then touch. And it's not easy, but you have to develop this technique. So we'll go like that. Cut the side of the head like that. So far, makes sense. Hopefully, that's better. Now, this is where the eyebrows are, and this is the side, right? Hope oh, that makes sense. Now, how do we approach the rest of the face? Well, let's drop another line from the bottom, because remember, same as we did here, we had this line from the bottom of the ellipse. So here it is. We have this line from the top of the ellipse. What does this line represent based on the Loomis method? If you're not familiar with it, you won't know. This is the hairline. Generally speaking, the hairline falls somewhere around here. OK? It can be lower on many people I saw. It's not a perfect method. Thank you, John. I'm really happy you enjoyed this. Um, and now, let's get the center. Getting the center isn't easy. Kelvin zero, oh, so that is what I've been doing wrong with the side cutting. Tell me what it is. I'm curious. Because um, I'm not sure what exactly it relates in my ex to in my explanation. Let me know. I'm curious. Um, so the center. Now, if you look at this line, let me show you. This eye and this eye, which one is closer to us? Think about it for a second. Uh, it's probably intuitive. This eye is closer to us, right? This eye is closer and this eye is farther. What does that mean about our perspective? Objects that move away from us appear to be smaller. What does this mean about dividing it into halves? The half that is closer to us appears to be larger than the half that is farther from us. OK? So the middle isn't going to be in the middle. It's going to be on, the, on, a, on, a, on a 2D plane. The middle is not going to be here. It is not. It's going to be a little tilted to the left. Does that make sense? So if we look at this length here, there's actually a way to find the center. You want me to show you a way to find this center here? It's pretty easy. Let me show you. It's a really nice trick. So you have this thing in perspective. You don't know where the center is. We're looking for the center of these two points, right? Drop a vertical line down from both of these points, OK? Connect them with a horizontal line. That's actually not going to work because I forgot to calculate something important. <laughs> this should be like that. And then it will work. We're, we're getting a little more advanced here. Should I go into this? Probably not. Mm, let me go into this. Okay. So basically, what we're looking at is a head that is in this angle. something like this. Why? Because it's not tilted up or down. It's only tilted left. OK, let's take this side trip. 
uh, the, the face plane is already a square, so just put a cross. So here's the problem. If you put a cross here, what you'll find is the absolute center. And that's not the right place to be. We need it to be to the left, Kelvin. You're correct. So I'm going to explain it in more depth. What we're looking at is a face at this angle. Why? Because we're looking at it straight ahead. It's not tilted up or down. It's looking straight ahead, but only to the left. But still, this eye is closer than that one, right? So the top goes like this, and the bottom goes like that. This line is closer to us than this line. It's larger. So what you need to do is account for that when you draw this shape. This is below us, and this is above us. Because it's below, it's going to move like that. And that's where you do the X, and you'll find the center tilted a little to the left. Okay, that's that's the tricky part. And it should probably the box should be like this. But I don't want to go into that too much. No, it's, it's way too complex for this explanation. But so it'll be somewhere around here in the middle. Now, if this was confusing, please forget about that. Let's use our intuition. Let's use our intuition for this because that's the thing you need to learn to use. Let's say we have no idea where it is, but we do know that this is the distance. Don't go center, go center and left. That's all you need to know. Take a bit of a turn more to the left in this example. OK, now what will happen is we wrap this center line around this circle. The same thing we've seen so far. It's going to wrap around like that, going around and behind the circle. Make sense so far? I hope it does. Uh, Shauna uh, Bartu says, this is amazing. Can't wait to watch when I have time to, uh, to draw along, bring uh, my Loomis book, book back to life. Cool, cool. Happy it helps. Ghosting sometimes I should uh, is something I should do more of when sketch sketching. Definitely. I do it a lot. A lot and all the time. But let us continue, OK? So we got the bottom line here, right? Now, what do we do with this distance? After we found the center, we double it. So this is approximately where the chin is going to be. Right now, look at it. There is a bit of perspective at play here. So this is the horizon. But this is at a bit of an angle. And this, the chin is at a bit of an angle because that's the box. This is why, this is how boxes help us draw faces. I should have started, I should have led with that. But we'll, let's do it like this, and then we'll look at the box structure again. We'll do this the same way, but with the box view. Okay? I, I promise I'll show you. I'm, I'm learning how to teach these stuff, too, because it's very, it's very advanced. It's, it's different from just explaining one, two, three-point perspective. This is a lot more uh, that goes into it. But imagine that this is the horizon line. So anything that, is, that we're looking at below that will start to curve. OK, so the chin is actually at an angle. How does it make sense? So that's where the chin is. Now, what do we do to, to connect, basically, to connect the face to the chin? It's actually pretty simple. We have this line from earlier. Something that I find helpful is to let's define the chin here. Again, go a little off center. This is longer than this. This half on the right, longer than the half on the left. I find it's very helpful to connect with a rounded line to the center here. Why? Because this is where the cheek is, and there's this rhythm line going through there. Same for the other side. There's a rhythm line. It's not an actual thing, but it's kind of a, almost like a gesture, something that, that connects these areas together. And same goes on the other side. You see? And then you connect the rest. So look at where the ear is. We're going to drop that ear in like that. Usually, it will end somewhere at the end of the ellipse of the side plane. And then we'll go at an angle and connect to the bottom. And we essentially got a three-dimensional head based on the Loomis method. Okay? This is the long kind of explanation of one way of doing, of one angle. Okay? I will show you how the box helps us to define these shapes. Because we're always in a hurry to jump to ovals, but actually you need to master boxes before that. Now, there is one more thing I want to do before we move on. And that is you talked about the placement of the eyes and how it's hard for you to place them. The thing that happens is you see this, it goes back in space. So from this point, 
it will go back in space into the eye sockets and then go back out and connect to the chin. And what happens is that this part that's beveled inwards, right? That's where the eyes lie. So what happens is we have this tendency to draw them too much outwards. But look at this point here. It's this point. The right eye will actually be somewhere around here. And if we continue this line, we'll find the left eye very close to the center. You see? Kind of where I would place it, right? I hope it may, I believe Kelvin, you asked about it, right? I believe. Uh, so I hope that makes sense. So that's one way of understanding where to place the eyes. The nose will go here, the bottom of this ellipse, bottom of the ear, right? But we have to remember something. We're at an angle now. So for anyone who has a hard time placing the nose, let me show you. The right side, again, is longer than the left, like the chin. But the nose is beveled outwards. So the, the tip of the nose is actually somewhere to the left, right? Maybe even more than the length. Like this tip of the nose goes beyond the nostril we cannot see in space. Let me show you it in large. This is the base of the nose. This is the center line of the face, right? Now, this area here and this area here, this is the bottom plane of the nose. This is the front and this is the side, right? This tip goes beyond that other side. We have a triangle, right? that goes beyond because of the tip of the nose, okay? So the way I would get this shape in is something along the lines of, like I did here. This goes here, this goes here, and then it connects over here. Something like that. And the side plane is gonna be somewhere around here, okay? I hope that makes sense. That's where you place the nose, and the mouth is midway through the chin, the center, the, I believe, I don't remember if it's the lower lip or let me check for a second here. It's approximately the middle, but actually it's a little up. So that's where you'll get the lip. Now notice what happens with the lips here. The lips are another complicated structure. I won't go into that, but if we just want to find them, kind of close to the corner of the eye, one side, Another side will be the edge somewhere around here. Let's just place a line for now. I, I actually don't want to go get into the lips at all at the moment. It's, it's a lot more complex. I could, but I don't feel like I'm, I mastered them enough to actually go into that depth. But this is the 3D representation of this head. I hope that makes sense. Let me know. Okay, I know it's, I know it's complex. This is very complex. If you want us to take a break and just chit chat and talk about random stuff, let me know. We can do that. We can kind of internalize everything we talked about so far. John says, I'll definitely be drawing along uh, to this later. I find your way of teaching really resonates with me. Thank you so, so much. Yes. And uh, we have a smaller turn turnaround today because I think people are busy and it's just a complex topic. So, so you know, take it. Um, features are a nightmare. Yes, no, that is true. They're not easy at all. And you know what's funny? Even when I'm drawing manga style, it's still a challenge because you still need to place them really accurately. So let's move over to a different angle, okay? Well, let me show you something a little different this time. Let's go with this one, okay? Actually, let's let's vary it up. Let's go with the rougher uh, facial features version. So this will be good, this one, okay? So let me show you something interesting. How can a cube help us get this angle in or this kind of a face? Okay, I'm going to flip a page just so I don't have to deal with the spiral, and we'll get to it. We have this head here. Now, look at a couple of interesting things. This is too much for me, but I'll try again later. And yeah, definitely, I want you to better develop your intuition of just understanding the very basics of it. There's actually a lot of work uh, that needs to be done on perspective. I'll show you why in this example, because... I went through a whole course of 20 lectures, something like that, of just perspective. And still, I have a lot to learn in relation to how to draw a head. I, I, I know it's very complex. 
it's very complex. Don't feel too bad about it. You will improve it with time. I want you to under, to start seeing things visually in 3D space, OK? So let me show you a few interesting things here. If we connect the edges of the eyebrows, we get this line right here. Mm. Same ambient as someone who's never seen this method used before. Yeah, frozen. So if, if you can take anything from this lesson, it's just that this method exists, and it is a science, and you can figure it out. And you can figure it out to a point where it's very um, intuitive. And you don't need even this as a reference photo. OK, just saying. Now, if you connect the edges of the eyebrows, you get this line. And if you connect the edge of the eyebrow to the ear, you get this line. And if you connect the face vertically, you get this line. Now, what am I hinting at? We have a system of axes here. We can actually place this within a cube. Let's see how we do it. So we have this line. We have that line. We have this green line. And let's base a cube off of that. So objects that are farther from us become smaller. So I'm not going to use the same angle. I'm going to tilt it a bit. It's not parallel. It's tilted. Tilted up top, tilted up bottom, red, tilted more at the bottom. Tilted a little less at the top. Green, three-point perspective, tilted a bit too. Well, let me constrain this in a box and you'll understand. It's not easy. I'm still learning this. And I will probably continue learning this till the day I die, because that's just how it is. It's not easy. Here's a box. We essentially sketch this face as a box. This is the angle. We're looking at it from above, right? This is the line of the front of the face, these lines. These are the lines of the side plane that's rounded, remember? We see a bit of the top. We don't see the bottom. We don't see under the chin. Let me know if this at least makes sense. I'm not expecting you to be able to do what I just did. But let me know if you understand that this is a cube representation of the angle of the face, right? Because let me draw another cube. So if I draw this cube, we're looking at it kind of from the front. You at least understand that this is not the same thing as this, right? This is a cube that we're looking at from this kind of an angle, right? So there's a difference there. So I want you to at least uh, understand that that's not the same. I'm going to go to second with guests. <laughs> OK, so we'll continue. Yeah, so Calvin says that this makes sense. Thank you. Uh, let's let's go over some of the messages as you write. Um, Calvin says, uh, heads are easy, the difficult is the feature. Yes, yes. Heads aren't easy, too, for many people if you're just getting started. That's, we're still at this point. I'm not even going into the features yet. Uh, Stacy says, this has been really helpful. I think I will have to rewatch a few times to absorb. Yes, definitely. I'll keep this video up. I'll try also to promote it more so that it gets more views after the live stream ends because it is an important topic. It's not an easy thing to do. And I think it will help a lot of people. Uh, Tulika says, I'm from India. Cool. Thank you for being here. Uh, Marjorie says, this is going to have to be watched again in bits and pieces. This vlog is packed with free. Yeah, I'm going fast. I know. I know. I know. Um, and that makes sense. OK, good. Well, we'll continue. Now, let's see here. I actually like the setup of StreamYard. I hope you like it, too, because then I can, let me remind you, I can do this. Please drop a like if you can. If you haven't, it helps more people reach uh, this live stream. And thank you so much. I see more likes and views, and that makes me happy. Um, so yeah, well, let's get rid of it now. And, and by the way, I can control the background photo, too. Let me show you. So I can change it to uh, this, to this. I can change the branding to StreamYard's generic one. I created this one uh, especially for the stream. Uh, so in any case, yeah. Uh, MB, I'm happy not uh, to be the only one who's overwhelmed. I understand, but I'm not able. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. I'm, I'm not expecting you to, to bring this to paper. I just want you to understand the idea behind it. So let's see how this cube helps us draw this face, OK? And then we'll do a fire round. Maybe I'll, I'll do a few faster ones um, just to give you a few more examples. OK, so this is the angle of the face, something like that. It's facing, this is the front, this is the side, top. It's not like this. This is completely different. Just saying. Now, 
let's draw first a sphere because it all starts with the sphere now don't worry yourself with the dimensions i can do it a tiny head within the same cube okay it's not about this size it's about the angles okay so we have a sphere now we want to cut out the side plane remember what i showed you we want to cut it along this axis so we're going to use a line that is parallel to it as the long axis of the ellipse okay i've shown you this uh hopefully you remember it let me show you here i've shown you which one was it here yeah if you want to cut along each of the axis lines this will be this this will be that this will be this right so this time we're cutting along the blue line so we need to find a parallel to the blue line which is this we're going to cut it out now where is that shift happening where's the corner of the eyebrow here it's a little to the right you see it's the head is rotated more than the previous example so this is shorter than this you see there's an extra gap here so i'm not going to go with the middle but rather a little to the right so i need to reach here and i also need to touch somewhere along this line and this you have to start developing a, an intuitive understanding for but i'm going to do my best to cut out this ellipse it's not perfect but here we go and look it actually is along the blue axis and let's make the entire face a little darker you see we created a basic building blocks for this shape can you show the cube with the face yes sure like this you mean you want to see the actual cube with the face like this in fact let me show you a couple of others if you look at this face it's a little down a little to the left like that right if you do um this face is easy just straight straight on the position of the rubik's cube equal to the face yeah so uh, i hope that is what i'm doing now answering that let me know from below see i'm tilting it like that let's get another one let's get a more interesting one we'll do later maybe see this rotated to the left pretty extremely look at how these eyes are to the left and then from below so it's this kind of an angle okay well, let me know if that makes sense it's not easy always to see it but i hope that answers your question banani let me know Linda says from Australia, I love your work, so inspiring. Thank you so much. Uh, makes me want to learn more. Thank you. Yeah, sure. I'm happy. I'm happy to help. So yeah, again, this one goes kind of like that. Okay. And then you want to cut along this axis, the blue axis. So you find the parallel on paper, 90, the perpendicular. Sorry, I keep saying parallel, perpendicular. And then that's your ellipse. The challenge is how wide should it be? Is it this ellipse or is it that ellipse, right? It's not easy to always to figure it out. And that's where you find that corner of the eyebrow. Now, what is this line? That's right, it's this line. What is this line here? It's this line. Okay, how did I gauge the angle is it this way is it that way honestly i tried looking at the angle between the eyebrow and the ear and kind of estimating did i get it 100 percent accurately no i got it a little stronger angle it should be maybe like this but that's fine that's fine what we're working on is understanding three-dimensionality now the green line goes down like that and we basically got everything in ready to go okay now let's find the center line here so if we rip that out of the face this is the dead center right this is equal to that so we don't want that we want this half that's closer to us to be larger you see how much larger this is this is much longer than this so we'll tilt it to the left bring it back somewhere around here that's the center right now the top part of the head try visualizing this and this is rounded right this is a rounded circle 
oval sphere. <laughs> and this goes back and around it. And the tippy top of the head is somewhere around here. That's the toughest point. Okay? So we got the center line. And we'll just drop it parallel to the green line here. Like that. Now let's start calculating the distances. Bottom. Now this is tricky. Remember the bottom of this uh, ellipse is where the this line is, the nose, to measure the jaw. But we don't see it as easily here. This is where you need to start developing an intuitive understanding of this. This is why I say do this for hours if you need to. Because what I'll show you is that it's somewhere around here, approximately, around the bottom. From here, we'll pull out a line, and it's, or we can even do this. So somewhere around here. Look what I did. I took a ride on the red axis. See, red axis, all the way to the edge here. And then I took a ride on the blue axis. And that's where the nose is going to be, or the bottom line here. Not 100% accurate, but close, close enough. And then we double this distance. But do we double it? Here's where the tricky part is. We don't double it. Doubling it will get us here. But what happens to things that are farther away from us compared to the closer ones? They get smaller. Just like this line moves away from us, this line moves down away from us in space. So this is not going to repeat. It's not going to get all the way down to here. It's going to be shorter. So maybe somewhere around there. Maybe. OK? So this is where our chin is. Now we can connect it to the side. Look at this area here. Goes all the way to the chin. Recreate that. And at this stage, you can do this even based just on observation. You can say, OK, it's this kind of a curve, that kind of a curve, and get it done like observation method, which I encourage as well. This is construction, but I encourage observation too. OK? So we got that, and, and I told you earlier, it really helps to connect the edge of the chin to this, to get that kind of a gesture, you see here, from the cheekbone. OK? And we got that here. I think after this one, we'll take a break and just chit chat, and you can ask any off-topic questions, because maybe it's, it's a lot of information to take in. But I do want to show you one more thing. Let's carve out the face from this. Let me clean it up a bit. I'm going to get rid of some of the guidelines and things we don't need anymore. I want to show you something. Remember, the face goes into the eye socket. So what we get here is this goes in, and then it pops out at another point, connects to the cheekbone, goes down. And that's the shape of the face without this excessive part here. This is where the eyebrows are. This is inside the eye sockets. This center line dips inwards. See this? It dips in and then continues along the center of the face downwards. The eyes at this angle, look at where the eye is. It's here. It's much to the right. It's, it, it really exaggerated. Maybe it's a little lower, though, so maybe around here. That's one eye, and that's the other eye barely visible. See how this works? Kevin, I hope you find this helpful. <laughs> it's a bit complex, I know. Now, look at what happens to the nose. The base of the nose is here, triangular. And the tip is farther out than the other nostril. So if this is the base for the nose, let's take a ride on the red line. Because that's the line that goes away from the face. So this is the tip of the nose. Uh, this is the bottom where the nostril is. And this goes back in space to this point. And it all connects to the base of the nose. So here is your nose. A lot of guidelines. And I think I put it a little too low. I will say that. So let's fix that and go a little higher. Um, so Kelvin, let me know if this helps. And here we have a Ruth cameo. Let me switch quickly. Here's the tip of the nose. Here's the tip of the nose. Shalom. Yes, show them that you love me anyway. Despite 
be forcing you to be on the live streams. <laughs> so hopefully Ruth woke you up. At Chuzeret, bye. So, tip of the nose. Here, it goes out. I hope it makes sense. By Alexandra says, wow, thank you. Now the nose, look at the nose, the mouth. Look at what happens here. The mouth wraps around the face, right? And it, it's even a little bit beveled outwards. And the lips here. And this, you can see here, a sliver of behind the lips. This is the tip, tip of the lip here, or the, the, this part. And you can see a bit of the cheek behind it, right? So this lip and this cheek behind it. And the bottom lip also obscures some of it. This, this kind of, it's way too low the nose. Now I see it. It should be like somewhere around here, probably. Like this, like that. You know, if I get the proportions, the initial proportions wrong, that's what happens. But what still works is it still could be a face, right? It could be a face with a more elongated nose, and it still makes sense in a three-dimensional space. That's what you want to pay attention to, okay? So, yeah, messed up the nose a bit, but that's fine. I'm not a plastic surgeon, so it's okay to mess up the nose. So let me know if so far it makes sense. Let's let's take a quick break here. Uh, maybe we'll do another one later. Uh, but let's see what you're saying in the chat. Now, uh, and not a lot of messages to read because people are paying attention to the process. But let me know if you have any general questions. We can take a chill, relaxed kind of break. So the eyes are placed around the ear level. Yes, and you can look at the 3D model, Calvin, and you'll see. Just, just take a look at the models. You will get it. So this one, for example, it's horizontal, right? So you see this connection here? The top of the eye is around the top of the ear. And then the bottom is a little lower than that. And I will add, it depends if the eye is closed, because what, look what happens when the eye closes. You see? It goes down. This part closes on this part, and then it's just here. Right? A closed eye will be something like that. So you need to, oh, it looks terrible. Let's get rid of that. Um, so you'll need to pay attention to that as well, okay? Um, Laura Prado says, hello from California. Thank you for being here, Laura. Hope you're doing well. He's coming here to Ruth. <laughs> uh, Calvin, thanks to all those manga drawing books. I've been kind of already know the basics of Loomis Technique, just not on this level. Yeah, so I hope that helps. I hope that gives you a nudge. And like everyone, if you've never done this before, it's going to be extremely complicated. Don't worry. It's OK. The one thing I want you to take away from this is at least be minded to seeing things as three-dimensional objects. OK? Understand they exist in space. And because we have a tendency to flatten everything out. So don't do that. Just fight that tendency. And don't flatten things out. Think about how they look in space. Think to yourself, OK, which part of this cube is the closest to me? It's this corner right here. So uh, this line, in theory, even though it's the same exact size, on paper, it will appear to be shorter because it's farther. And look at the closer it gets, the more skewed the perspective gets. So you get a bit of a taste of a fish eye view. The reason we don't see fish eye is because our, um, what do you call it? Our, our, our vision, the range of our vision is too small to see it. This is why fisheye lens um, makes everything um, distorted, because it has a larger, it's wider angle, right? So the closer I hold this cube here, yes, the more skewed it may appear. But even the camera has its limitations, right? So it's not going to be a fisheye yet. Uh, bye, Alexander. I'm using this technique for anime drawing. Yeah, this is my struggle. Let me show you, let, as we chill a bit, let me show you what I've been doing with manga. Faces. I have quite a few of these here. Um, there. I practiced with a video by Akihito Yoshitomi. He has a very by the book method for drawing the, the face that I can show you in just a second. Uh, he does also a lot of colors. Um, so you see, he puts the faces inside boxes. Um, the more you get used to it, the more you can do this intuitively. But look at this, it's tried intuitively. The eyes are so far apart. Uh, MB says I will do a lot of homework. Yeah, that, that's, it's important. I'm doing a lot of this. I'm studying, the, again, different heads, trying to figure them out. Here are a few very uh, successful, I think, studies that I was very focused while doing. Um, but still, there is a lot to fix here, a lot of mistakes. Here are some more. This one turned out almost perfect. This is the one I'm almost the proudest of. 
So yeah, very happy about this one. I hear my AirPods going a little crazy. Let me charge one and then flip them. Let me know if you can't hear me for some reason. Uh, yeah, you need a wide uh, angle lens to see a proper fish. And, don't, and you say also, don't. oh, I love this guy. I think you're talking about Akihiko. He's amazing. He's really incredible. Uh, are you sharing these models? Yes. Uh, please, Banani, take a look at the description of the live stream. Uh, it's there. I have the, the softer model and the rougher model. Both are linked. If you go to this website, Sketch Lab or whatever it's called, you won't find them. It's very hard. To, I don't know why it's hard to find them now, because maybe they're old, but I found them a long time ago, and, and I've been using them ever since. Uh, but yeah, let me see if I have more faces here. What am I doing? I want to show you some faces. Uh, Arav, any special book for faces and perspective? Um, so I would check for Marshall Vandruff's perspective course. If you're talking about, you need to master perspective first. So I'm going to write down Marshall's name, Marshall Vandruff. I believe that's how you spell it. Uh, it's a 12 bucks course, teaches everything about perspective. It's insane. Um, these I like. These are by Provo. Yeah, Akihito is insane. I, I love him. I, I watched a lot of videos. His method is really by the book. Uh, here, these are some very successful faces that I got. By the way, can you recognize the characters? I don't know. Like, some of these I'm not even familiar with, but these two I am familiar with. So, especially this one. This one a lot of people should recognize. Let me know. Uh, yeah. Uh, Wakabalula says, Lulumis. Yes, indeed. And Marshall Vandroff, here's my comment, just so that you can check it out. Uh, okay, thank you so much. Yes, I hope I can help. So this is actually Misa Amane from Death Note. Uh, and this, I forgot her name, from My Hero Academia, that I don't even watch. I just know the character. Um, this one I invented, so it's half decent, not perfect. Um, let's see what else we have here. Torso stuff. I think that's it for faces yeah that's it for glasses but yeah uh by the way let me show you uh, uh it's funny uh, the, here are some more i didn't show you earlier uh i did quite a bit of um let me show you this method because uh, akihito has a really insane method so what he'll do is he'll draw like this circle and he'll draw it like this dashed in you know not not smoothly uh it's funny because he's a pro, like a really good artist. And then he'll do this X, like I've shown you so far. And by the way, ask away if you have any general questions. And then he'll do this angle, right? And then instead of cutting the sides, he goes like this, right? He'll do this, like that. And so connect these. And then I don't know how he gauges where the chin is going to be, but he just goes like that, straight ahead without really measuring anything. And then the eyes fall somewhere around here, something like that, probably messing it up. And then the chin and connecting them, that's 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 his method. And then he, he may do this kind of a side, cutting the side, showing the hairline, and then the nose is here and the mouth is there. And that's how he'll do it. And then what he likes to do is go over it with a pencil. Tell me if, don't know if, that, if you're familiar with, you've probably seen a lot of this in action, right? So he does something like that, which I like a lot. It's a crazy method. It's really by the book, but that's how he likes to do it. And then get some hair in. No, barely any guidelines. And there you go. You have a character. That's funny. Um, da -da -da -da. Wait a second, we have a few comments to go over. Sunflower Cherry Flower says, hi, Liron. Hey, guys, thank you for being here. Kelvin says, that face you invented kind of looks like Hikaru uh, rival from Hikaru no Go. Funny, yeah. You know, by the way, I'm studying Japanese, so I'll, I'll work on my pronunciation, Hikaru, Hikaru no Go. Uh, hopefully, I'm <laughs> pronouncing it correctly. These are cool. Thank you, Domo. John says, girl face drawing Sakura from Card Capture. Actually, it's not Sakura, but it's very, uh, it's very similar to the style. Uh, it's kind of the more the older um, anime style, which I like. I like a lot. I'm trying to to draw based on a lot of styles because I find it helps me, um, I guess, to better understand the more realistic style too, which is funny. Domo, yeah, he's an artist who showed me it's okay to make scratchy lines, especially if you're inking later. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Arab, uh, I'm having some difficulty in learning planes of faces. So here's what I would encourage you to do, Arab. The plane of the face. It's not too complex. So for example, 
if you are able to draw a box, just a box, which I will encourage you to learn, and then you're able to trap a sphere inside it, right? And then you're able to cut out the side of the sphere. And then you're able to attach a chin. You'll get it. But the problem is you can't get here unless you go through this a hundred times. As many times as you need to. And then go through this. Right? And then go through even doing cones. Right? You have to practice these basic shapes because how will you be able to cut out a rounded side plane from a circle if you can't do these basic shapes? I hope that makes sense. Let me know if, if it were, it makes sense to you. I really want you to practice homework one and two. Practice cubes and, and boxes and practice spheres. It really is important. Okay. Uh, hey guys, my name is Fiona. Welcome, Fiona. Sunflower Cherry Flower 12. Welcome aboard. I remember you from, from the previous stream, right? I think you were here. Kelvin, yeah, that is what those manga drawing books usually teach as well. Really simplified version of Loomis. Yeah, I hate them, uh, Kelvin. I hate them because what they do is they go like this draw a head, and then here's what they expect you to do figure out where the center line is and attach a chin. Just do this, you know? Just do that, that's all you need to know. And here are the eyes. It, it has no backbone. It, it has nothing for you to lean against. And then you don't get the result you want because it's super hard. I don't like this. I love the Loomis method. It shows that extra step and it forces you to go back and restudy perspective and restudy volumes and three dimensionality, so yeah. Uh, this is what I don't like about these books. Uh, they have some good information about them on just general manga making, but not enough for me to, you know, to like them. Uh, yeah, I've seen him do that. Hi, Fiona. He's so loose with it, though. Yeah, I know. It's just experienced Domo. He's done it thousands of times, probably. Uh, nice drawing about faces. Uh, can you do angry faces? Yeah, so I'm not going into the expressions or facial features, because honestly, I have a lot to learn. Uh, but I will do in the future. Domo, I just really love how he inks his sketches. It's so fluid and beautiful. Yeah, uh, Domo, you'll be surprised with a good basis. Uh, the inking is not that hard, really. It is, it's very flowy because what makes the inking look good is actually the solid drawing underneath. I know it's so boring to say, but that's actually how it works, funny enough. Uh, but yeah. Um, the facial features are easy to put when you understand their three-dimensional volumes uh, and when you build the face correctly. Not like this. I, see, I know you see it small, but like what I showed you earlier. That's why volumetric drawing is so important. Volumetric. Do you mean like measured perspective? Yeah, let me teach you a few perspective tricks. Or maybe we'll save it for another time. Do you know Naruto Shippuden? Of course, I watched, I watched all of Naruto a long time ago. Uh, I love it. I love Naruto. I hate Boruto. Porto is terrible. Uh, draw head. <laughs> step one, draw heads. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that. Step one, draw a circle. Okay. And it's like this, like a terrible circle. Or, uh, I was talking about planes of face as in chiseling and detailing of a face. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I don't know how to explain. No, no, I get it. I get it. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Um, what you're talking about is, yeah, it's tough. For me too. Um, do I have a good example to show you? I don't think I have one. Um, but but like seeing the planes of the face. Actually, what can help is this kind of thing. This guy here, right? Would help you, helps you see the front and side. I know what you mean because what we're doing here is a very, it's a very simplified approach of just cutting out the sides, right? <laughs> me petting, petting my studio assistant's head. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, get one of these. They really help. Uh, Kelvin, yeah, those manga drawing books didn't really explain. <laughs> yes. Uh, Dragonfly, I missed the live because of a power cut, and now everything is going tangentially to my head. Yeah, no worries, no worries. We'll do a bit of a chill kind of thing here. If you want me to answer some questions, uh, talk about some general stuff, we can, it, as always, dive back into manga. We talk about it all the time. Mm -hmm. 
or I can show you the previous sketchbook I just closed up. I just, um, there's fear cylinders. Oh, yeah, 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 I get it. I get it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can show you my previous sketchbook. It has a lot of works in it. I finished it. I told you this is a new sketchbook about two weeks ago. I did a lot of work in two weeks. Um, let me show you my previous one. You have seen some of it, but I did do a lot since then. So the camera is too, uh, too close to it. Maybe I'll get the camera zoomed out a bit. We'll see. Let's do this. Let's get it a bit farther. Got to really improve my setup. It is a crime that it's not better yet. But yeah, like, I think that's good enough. Neuron, how do you know where to place the initial sphere inside a box? Uh, the sphere never touches the sides of the square. There are gaps around the sphere which have not been measured. Yeah, I'll explain it. I'll explain it in just a second, John. I'm, I'm going to put it on the screen because it's a great question. I'll show you. Um, but just to show you a bit of what I've been doing there in the last couple of days, or maybe let's go back. Because the start of it, I don't think you've seen. I want to show you some faces. OK, so it's just to show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. You see this? Cylinders, right? When you look at it straight ahead, I know it's a little light. Forgive me. OK, we'll do this. This is a little dark. Look at it straight ahead. Tilt it back. You see a bit more of the bottom. A bit more, a bit more, a bit more, a bit more, right? You tilt it back. It gets a little squeezed in space. Squeeze more, squeeze more, squeeze more, squeeze more, right? This at an angle. Like that, tilt it more towards us, right? So if this is our cylinder, like that, this, and then tilt it more towards us, and then tilt it more towards us, see? This is the kind of grinding you have to go through. It really, really helps, OK? So you learn not only where the long axis of the uh, uh, ellipse is, right, parallel to this long axis, you also learn how to squeeze it, how much. Like, how much do you squeeze the cylinder, right? Is it here? Is it here? You have to practice these things. Let's see if we have something else that's interesting to show you here. Warm-ups. I do warm-ups all the time. Everyone needs to warm up, right? Um, tons of the same thing. You have to do a lot of repetition. Faces. This, this I think I showed you. These are cool. So these are from, uh, maybe some of you will recognize it. It's from uh, and Dr. Stone. So yeah, very, very clear style. So I want to recognize this one for me. You got Guts from Berserk, of course. So yeah, uh, I hope that's fun to see. Let me do, uh, let me explain what, what uh, you asked. John, let me get the camera a little closer back again. Just a bit. And we'll see if there are any more questions. This isn't easy, all of this topic. So how do you know where to place the sphere inside a cube? So John, the way I treat the cube is more like a grid, not like a specific place. So if this is my cube, I can put the oval, the sphere, anywhere within it. I can put it here. I can put it here. I can fill it up. And I can make it even bigger than the cube. Here's the important part. The important part is that you understand that the side plane will be perpendicular to this line. So like this. Right? And then this grid indicates the side of the face, the relationship between the ear and the eyebrow, right? And this side is like a grid indicating the front of the face, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the chin. See what I'm saying? I hope that makes sense. It dips in, goes back out, cheek. See, and you got a face. That's the most important part. I could draw another box. Let's change the angle. Let's make it a little more subtle of an angle, right? Draw another box and have this as the face, just here. As long as I understand that 
to cut the side, I'm going to go through here. And then the front part of the face is this grid between these two lines. And the side of the face is this grid. See? Between these two lines, top to bottom, right? It doesn't matter. You see, it doesn't matter where you place it. Treat this as a grid. Treat this as the system of axes we saw earlier, right? I hope it makes sense, John. Let me know if you want me to show this again. And look at how the heads conform to the angle of the box. It's, it's really amazing. You can actually feel that it's rotated, right? And Domo, you're correct. The box is mainly there to show the orientation of the sphere, which is hard to do on a sphere alone because you basically need the rubber bands. That's right. And, and it's also harder. It's not as, OK, Domo, one more thing about this. The, the, another problem with the sphere is it's not as specific. Because a sphere, yes, it will tell you to tilt up and down and left to right. But with the box, you can actually see the side. You know this is the side of the face. This is the front of the face. And that's that. And there is no question marks, right? That's the, the most important uh, part of it. So I hope that makes sense. <laughs> that's the long answer. We'll buy some uh, heads. Yeah, definitely. Get one. It's it's good for the studio, yeah. Just place it there, this little Colk light-headed head. <laughs> um, so yeah, we got that by Alexander's laughs. Uh, what about shading faces in detail? Oh, man, that's going to be a f way in the future. What are those jelly bean-looking things? Uh, this is the bean, uh, the bean study. So what Proco shows is how to show the movement of the rib cage and the pelvis with bean-like structures. So let me give you an example. Let's say that we have a person twisting their upper body. So their torso is facing to the right, but her pelvis is facing the left. And you get this beautiful curve, right, like this. And if you were to build upon it, you may have the tor torso here with boxes, again, the most useful shape out there. And then the, the pelvis here. So look at what happens here. We use the bean, two balls, basically, to show a tilting of the body or a rotating or twisting, right? And then you can actually connect all these lines and create a believable figure. So how will that look? Something like that. And we'll have a belly button here. Does this work for you? Do you see this as a body? We have here one leg, right? Maybe the other one is back to keep the balance. And this is a very extreme angle, right? Torso faces this way, maybe you get the muscles there, but very extreme angle. So what you basically do is you can you can define every movement of the body by this. So if you have someone leaning back, for example, you'll have this kind of a pattern where they lean back and it pinches. There's a pinch here and a stretch there. And then you can add on top of that, even without a 3D structure, you can add hands, you can add legs, right? See? It's a very nice way of kind of building up the human figure, understanding its orientation in space. That's the most important part. The orientation in space is the most important part. Understand that. The details, the features, and everything is built on top of that. Uh, Dragonfly Art Ruth is precious indeed. MB, do you use good or expensive pencils for warm-up and practice? Let me show you. Not only do I use the simplest of pencils available, I bought this box of pencils, who knows when. It was huge. It was like this thick and full of pencils, like um, packed to the brim. And this was not exaggerating five or six years ago. And I'm still using those same pencil for everything, including the watercolors. You see, I'm using a lot of them for. So I, I sharpen and sharpen and sharpen. When, when it's too short, I put it in the pencil extender. 
I'm using the cheapest pencils because they're the best. The number two medium pencil for me, for my use, is the best. Sometimes I'll use a fancier 6B that's a little darker, right? But for the most part, I don't need it. Everything was done with these pencils here. It's the same box I've been using for years. And I also have like this random pencil here. I think my dad brought me, where is it? Yeah, my dad brought me these from Korea like years ago, maybe a decade ago. I had four of these and they're so bizarre. They have layers in them. It's really hard to sharpen, but I don't use any really expensive materials when it comes to pencils. The simplest things work best in my opinion, in my experience. Um, Domo, this the box is mainly there to show more reputation. We read that. John says that's worth your own. Thanks, Ron. That's great. I'm very happy. It's helpful. Uh, a rub. Uh, I mean, was this matter of pencils expensive? Every pencil is good. Yeah, but sometimes you know, more expensive stuff can lead to better results. It really depends. Marjorie divided attention between grocery delivery, and this was impossible. Usually, there's no problem. Excellent class. Marjorie, thank you so much. Mm. I know Thursday is grocery day. Uh, groceries are important. We don't often, I often schedule them not for Thursday because I don't want to divide my attention. For me, it's different. I can't, I mean, we're doing this stream, so I have to really concentrate. Um, wish I had a class like this 50 or 60 years ago. Yeah. Uh, so I'm happy I can provide something like that now. It's not simple. The things we talked about today aren't simple. Don't worry if they take a long time to sink in. That's just a part of it, right? Let me just put this here in the background. Um, yeah. Uh, Sphere has countless more tiny planes, all looking at different directions. Exactly. Exactly. Frozen. Uh, I think the tricky thing about art to me is separating guidelines with actual lines. Yeah. So actually, the colored pencils are good for this because you can you can start with just a, let's say a blue pencil, and then go over it with the darker pencil for the actual details. Uh, I know it's it can be a challenge. What I would also encourage you to do. Frozen is to work on very, see, very gentle lines. If you can do that, um, because I'll usually draw much lighter than what I showed you today. I'll draw much, much lighter. And only once I'm certain of what I've got, I'll start, you know, darkening things up. And then I no longer have a problem to tell which is which, right? Um, so, yeah. Freaking morons. First time watching, just caught the cube explanation. Gotta say, best explanation I've heard so far. Subscribe. Thank you so much. It's so cool to hear that people discover this channel through the live streams. I'm so grateful to have you on board. And that username is so freaking good. I'll be I'll enjoy reading it in future live streams, freaking morons. It's funny. Uh though beautiful twists, they're so hard to do. So, yeah, th here's the thing: they're not as hard to do as you would think. All you have to do is understand that if let's go the other way. If this turns this way, and then this turns that way, and then you just connect them. It takes time to learn, yes, but it's actually not that hard. And go over, do this. Do this as a warm-up. Do these twists. Be be uh, very confident with them. Do them from the shoulder if you can. Don't don't go like this. It's not as good. And, and also, if you use the entire wrist, of course, it's not the same. Go like this. Fill in a page with these weird. You see, I just made up a, a figure here because, because I understand this very basic structure. So practice it. Practice the bean. It really is useful. Check out Proko's channel, everyone. You should. It's really good. Kelvin says thanks. Happy I could help. Scars, good stuff, Leron. Thanks. Thank you for being here. Uh, Arav, I've got to say your video is so full of knowledge, uh, you, and you are easy to talk to. I'm, that's my goal. I want to make it as easy as, as possible, really. Uh, and to be as uh, accessible as possible. It's really hard. It's a constant struggle, but I try. Uh, pencils, pencil, yeah. No, there are some good pencils. I have to to say, some people do say that a certain pencil worked best for them, and I do encourage you to try and see what works best for you. I found that the number two is really ideal for me. There's a reason it's in the dead center of the of this scale. I like it. Works really well for me. Christian Anthony Denosa, hello, I'm uh, from the Philippines and really want to learn this. Yeah, so if you watched from the beginning, uh, hopefully it helps. Check my other videos, everyone, generally speaking, on boxes. I have a lot of videos on that uh, that can guide you in the right direction just to get started with the boxes. Boxes is the basics, really. Marjorie, I have no choice of delivery day. I wish I did. Oh, really? It's, it's interesting because for us, when we do the delivery, you just choose a date. Um, it's just Thursdays. 
or maybe because that's the only day you can. Yeah, of course, that makes sense. Amby, thank you, but I was asking about expensive paper for all. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I'm using exp cheap paper for almost everything. <laughs> Same answer. Same answer, Amby. Sorry, I went with the pencil. Uh, why did I go with pencil? Maybe because people were... Uh, oh, paper. Yeah, I read that wrong. Sorry, my bad. Uh, expensive. So, okay, this is probably the cheapest sketchbook you can get, like papyrus. I don't think you can even get it in the US. 37 uh, Israeli shekels divided by 3.3. So that'll be 10 bucks, probably, something like that. Nine, nine bucks. And this has how many pages? Um, 80 pages, and they're good enough to draw on each side. So it's pretty cheap, I would say. It's not a fancy, like you can find fancy um, Faber Castle, maybe, or not Faber Castle. Which brand is it? Not Canson. I forgot what it is. Oh, I have one here. Fabriano, of course. So I have a Fabriano one here. But to be honest with you, this works as well. So this one costs, but it's larger too. So you have to take that into consideration. I don't remember how much this one costs, maybe 100 shekels or 25 bucks, but this works well for everything. Now, the only exception for me is, of course, watercolor. I use expensive watercolor paper. When I did the manga, I used manga paper by a brand called The Liter. It's this brand. This is the ink by that same brand. So for paper, for final result, the only reason I would use that paper is because I wanted something that's strong enough so that uh, it won't buckle just because of my oily hands, okay? So yeah, I did use a bit more expensive paper for that, but it's not that expensive too. Um, so, sorry, sorry for going on the pencil tangent. Uh, Marjorie Johnson, this is something I can work on, but we did get a fun little story time of me buying that pack of pencils and still using it to this day. Marjorie Johnson, this is something I can work on when I'm having a not so good day, especially since there are more and more of them. Oh, sorry to hear, Marjorie. I hope things, uh, I hope things improve for you. Um, I have a lot of tough days too. I mean, I, I think everyone goes through them, but hopefully it's not something too bad. I think health above all. So hopefully you, oops, that's talked about health above all. Blooper live, spilled my coffee. I'm gonna clean it later. So let's just do it. Let's do an initial, initial cleanup. It touched almost anything it could on the way, but luckily the computer, iPhone, and other things were saved. Hopefully the air condition control isn't dead. As I said, health above everything. Let me get just a piece of uh, paper towel just so that it starts to soak. The one thing we don't want is Ruth licking the coffee. Because then, first off, I don't think they're supposed to. And second, she, she has enough energy as it is. Um, yeah. Uh, we'll get rid of this. Initial cleanup complete. I'll go over it with uh, wet wipes or whatever you call it. Not, not wet wipes. Wet wipes are for butts, right? I'll go over it with a, a wet towel, I guess. It's good for now. I gotta prioritize the stream, so I'll go over it in just a few seconds. Uh, so let's see what you're saying here. Uh, and and the, the worst part is actually that I wanted to finish my coffee. That's the worst part. I wanted to drink it, but unfortunately I can't. But I guess maybe it's a good snippet I can use for, a, for a, an Instagram reel showing me spilling the coffee. <laughs> but yeah, let's go over some more comments. Um, Keep me posted, Marjorie, and if there's anything I can help with, just let me know. Ravi says, thanks so much. I used to draw with uh, uh, reading books, but now you have uh, clarified a lot of doubts. I'm happy to, to be able to help. Thank you so much, Ravi. Uh, Doma says, I'll try it for sure. Christian Christian Anthony Denosa, hello. Will you do in-depth tutorial about human skulls drawn in perspective? Not skulls for now. Maybe I will in the future. Um, to me, I don't, I didn't study it too much because this a bit. I didn't study it too much because uh, I didn't need to. All I needed was the Loomis head, but maybe in the future. <gasps> Who knows? Calvin, is there even such a thing as good quality drawing paper? Yeah, there is. Arsh, Saunders Water, Strathmore, maybe. <clears throat> I mean, this isn't watercolor. Or oh, yeah, yeah, okay. <clears throat> For pencil, yes, there is a kind of good paper. You just want it to be thick enough and also... 
So this paper is not good for ink because the ink will bleed. So it's not good. You need a smooth bristle kind of paper for inking. So for the manga, I did use manga paper. But for pencil, if you're doing just pencil, whatever, I'll, I'll draw on a napkin. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Ambi said, thank you as much. There is so much uh, paper on the market. Yeah, get the cheapest one. I think a good place to start for practicing will be the Canson um, XL sketchbook. And if you want to really go wild, go for the watercolor one. It's a little fancier. And use it for pencil and pen and ink. It works well. Laura says, oh, no. Yeah, it's OK. I spilled the coffee. No big deal. Uh, drawing on slightly textured kind of heavier paper would be more expensive. Yeah, so it's funny, Domo. The textured paper may be more expensive, but the smoother paper is what you want sometimes. John says, play a drink, new wet and wet technique. <laughs> Invented something new here. Marjo, you, we use newsprint back in the day. Yeah, oh, I know, I know. I know about that. I heard about that. Uh, I still have a uh, half pad from years ago. They're a little big to use in, uh, in bed, so time to cut down some. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I saw these. It's crazy. And you would stack them, right? Um, it's funny. I, I've seen these in use. Frozen painting the floor with the coffee. Wet wipes are for butts. Well, if we learn one thing today. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Hopefully, at least that was helpful. Some insights. Um, yeah. So I think we are we can wrap it up for today. Uh, here's what we're going to do. Please, 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 please work on the homework. Okay? Study boxes, if that's your goal. And if you're just interested in watercolor, uh, know that this is super helpful. Okay? So um, even, again, if you're just doing watercolor, studying three dimensions, understanding how things are built in three-dimensional shape space is useful for everything. You'll see the world in a different light. You'll understand what you're looking at. It's so uh, so so useful. I love how I just left Tom. I, le I left your chat up. What about stuff? I'm going to keep it up till the end of the stream. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, yeah, it's it's... It's just super important and useful. This, this here is advanced, but I wanted to show you how the application of these concepts of boxes can help with something more complex. Okay, uh, you got to start somewhere, and if you just if you start with this kind of a thing here, it's wobbly. It has no structure. You got to learn the basics. Uh, you can't just paint an omelet uh, sunny side up, <laughs> as, as it appears here. You have to start with boxes. Boxes. Spheres and ovals, not easy. Work on it, practice it. And I can do follow-up videos in the future. And that's definitely something I can do for specific topics. We can do a whole video just on cubes, just saying. Um, let's read a few more chats, and then we'll wrap it up. Domo, I draw pretty much just on Bristol smooth because I, uh, I ink a lot. Yeah, definitely. We bought a really big pads. <laughs> the yeah, I, I, there's are huge. Thank you for the stream, Liron. Uh, thank you, Liron. Sure enjoyed this session, says Susan. Thank you so much, Susan. Um, uh, freaking morning, what is your live stream schedule? So I live stream every Thursday, 9 a.m. Eastern time, freaking morons. <laughs> and uh, I uh, do two other videos a week. So I'll release a video on Tuesday and Saturday. So Tuesday, then a live stream on Thursday, then another video on Saturday. Uh, so check it out on the channel. Check out the videos. Uh, it's a bit of a different format, you know, less like more action doing and less talkative. Uh, but yeah. Uh, John says, thanks for another great live session. Thank you so much. MB, thank you so much, Liron. I will do my homework. I think this will help me with painting animals. Yes, yes, for sure. And we can talk about that in the future. Um, Christine uh, says, great lesson. I will catch watch several times. Thank you. Have a great day, evening in your case, Liron. Sending love to all. Thank you so, so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something new. This isn't easy. Be patient. Take your time. I've been doing this for really intensely with heads and structures and the figure for about a year and a half now, really intensely. It's things I used to do a lot from observation before, and I still learn a ton of new things. So yeah, it takes time. Thank you so much, Christian, for being here. Hope to see you in a future live as well. Thank you all. Bye-bye. We'll talk again real soon.